So the next speaker is Andrei Bogatarev, also from the Institute of Numerical uh, Mathematics in Moscow, and he will speak about stability uh, polynomials uh, for explicit rungi kut uh, methods, uh, optimal and damped. Thank you. Ah, Thank you. Very much. It's written here. Yeah, unfortunately, our life is getting more and more virtual from year to year, and uh, the events of the last year, that is this COVID epidemic, uh, only aggravates this bad tendency. This is why I'm so happy to be here and thank the organizers uh, for, 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 for us to be eventually offline, that is a way of keyboard, and finally to meet people whom I didn't see uh, for, for a year and, and even more. Uh, and uh, my talk uh, is uh, related to certain uh, polynomials which are uh, uh, which, which, which in turn are related to some numerical methods. That is, methods for numerical integration of ordinary differential equations. So we, we, we know that all things uh, around us, they change in time and, uh, and uh, Sometimes this evolution is described in terms of ordinary differential equations, like shown, will be shown in a second. And yeah, here, thank you. Ah, that's it. And if, even if, if the phenomenon, phenomenon we consider uh, is described by partial differential equation, uh, one can. Uh, discretize it uh, with respect to special uh, variables. And again, we get a, a set of uh, ordinary differential equations. But this will be a very huge set of equations. And of, of course, uh, solving it on a computer is a very special sport. Uh, and sometimes uh, even powerful, very powerful computer cannot solve it. So let's recall some facts about uh, from uh, numerical analysis of ordinary differential equations. So roughly, uh, all uh, approaches for the integration, they are split into two large classes, the explicit and implicit method. So the typical implicit method was suggested by Euler. It is the explicit Euler method. That is, uh, it is, uh, it is shown here. Here, h is the time step for integration, and u n plus 1 is the next value of the uh, vector function that we would like to, to, to reconstruct. Uh, and uh, here we see that uh, to reconstruct the, the vector uh, on the next step, we, only, uh, we can use this explicit formula. That is, we need not solving any equations. And moreover, it is the, the computational pro process is highly parallelizable because we can assign a uh, separate processor unit for each component of, of this vector un. And it will uh, work independently of all the others. This is why uh, explicit methods are very good from computational viewpoint. <laughs> A good command. But unfortunately, the explicit methods usually have very poor stability properties. For instance, if we apply uh, this uh, scheme, this numerical scale scheme to the uh, so-called Dahlquist test equation, which is merely this one, it emulates, in, in fact, uh, Lambda here, it, it em emulates uh, the eigenvalue of, of the Jacobian matrix related to this uh, mapping F evaluated at a solution. Uh, and the, this uh, gives, gives us uh, the, the transfer function, which is a linear, uh, li li linear polynomial. It's very simple, uh, where its, uh, its argument I I is uh, related to lambda lambda is this here, is this here parameter in Dahlquist equation, and h is a time step uh, by, by a very simple manner. What is that? Yeah. Hmm? What is that? Yeah, it's. 
yeah, it depends. The, 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 the error propagation, that is, if we have some certain errors that we committed on certain step, then it, it, it will be multiplied by this function. This is a kind of a transfer function. And in fact, for good, uh, this our argument should lie within the stability domain uh, of this transfer function. Or in this theory, it is called stability function. Mm, that is in this domain, that is where the, val the absolute value of uh, this polynomial is, is not greater than 1. So in the uh, complex plane, this will be a unit disk, which is given by this equation. And uh, this gives us uh, the stability condition of, of three authors, Courant, Friedrichs, and Levy, uh, which says that time step cannot be larger than 2 over lambda. Lambda is, again, the eigenvalue of the matrix, of Jacobi matrix evaluated as a solution. And this restriction may be very strict, really, because once uh, the right-hand side of the equation comes from uh, discretization of uh, partial differential equation, uh, it, it, it may happen uh, that this large, this, this lambda is extremely large. For instance, if we consider uh, the heat in equation, that's uh, with, with uh, one, just one special uh, sp special uh, variable, uh, the, this will say us, this condition will say us that uh, the time step should be of the same value as the square, uh, the square uh, of, the, uh, of the special step, which is, which is really impossible for, for computations, with high accuracy at least. And uh, th this is the great disadvantage of all explicit m methods. Let's have a look at implicit integration. So the implicit Euler method looks like this. And here we, at each step, we have to solve this equation with respect, with respect to the next vector that we evaluate. Un is known. And then for the next vector, we, we have this equation. And uh, first of all, uh, this set of equation may be actually very huge especially if, if we work with, with several special dimensions. Uh, but also, the, this dependence f uh, may be nonlinear. So we just have to solve uh, nonlinear equations. That is, we, we need some uh, several iteration of Newton method, for instance. And what's even worse, nonlinear equation can have not any unique solution. That is, we need some logical block which decide which, uh, which of the solutions that we received have to be thrown away. Uh, this is the disadvantage. Uh, but from a viewpoint of stability, it is perfect, really. That is, uh, the uh, stability function, uh, which describes propagation of error, uh, it, it, now it, it is a rational function. Uh, and its stability domain is the exterior of the unit disk. That is, uh, there is actually no uh, uh, any requirements on, on, on stability of our procedure. That is, we can make quite large steps for integration with respect to, to, to this procedure. So uh, around 50s and 60s, there was a, an idea how to improve uh, the behavior of explicit method, which are very prospective from view viewpoint of implementation, especially with, with parallel machines. Well, there were no parallel machines. They appeared only. only. Today we use them. Uh, and uh, many authors. Uh, we are thinking how 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 to uh, uh, how to to make uh, multi how how to make uh, explicit method more stable. So here are some names shown here, and uh, uh, those authors they suggested certain uh, optimization problem for polynomials, which will eventually be a stability function for some explicit multi-stage Runge-Kutta method. 
but it, it is uh, adapted for problems uh, in the vicinity of sem negative semi-axis, but this is a very natural uh, sphere of application, actually. In, in particular, it uh, covers all reaction, diffusion, and advection problems that we face in reality. And the problem is as follows. Uh, given a polynomial uh, of, a, of, of certain degree n, uh, we fix its uh, junior coefficients. N unlike in a Chebyshev setting, who, who, who fixed the senior coefficient, here we, we fix the junior coefficient of the polynomial the, exactly the same way as in, in the exponential function. Uh, th this is uh, necessary for the to, to rise the uh, order of accuracy of our runge kutis method. That is, this polynomial touches touches the uh, the, the graph of, of the exponential function to a, to a rather high order. Uh, but on the other hand, we would like that uh, this polynomial uh, would remain within limits from minus one to one. That is, the, its modulus doesn't exceed one on the maximal interval negative to the real axis. This is the problem. It looks rather unusual, but it is. And uh, uh, several numerical uh, procedures for this optimization problems were proposed, but uh, they, as, as usually for, uh, for, for the problems of rational uh, approximations, they are very labor consuming and they face uh, lots of instabilities. Uh, and those, this is more or less around Remes method. Uh, also, but another method was proposed by Lebedev, but still it works for, uh, for low degrees uh, of polynomials only. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we, we can try to, uh, to, to, to write an analytical formula for the solution of this uh, problem. And actually, uh, th this was done for uh, pi equal to 1. This is od order 1 method, Urungikuta method. Uh, and uh, th the stability function, that is this solution to the optimization problem, turns out just uh, rescaled and shifted uh, Chebyshev polynomial. This was done by Franklin, yes, yet, yet before 1960. And uh, also, I heard the rumor that uh, this problem was, uh, was solved by one of uh, Markov brothers yes, in the 19th century. Uh, I do not know the, the reference, but uh, I heard about that. Mm. So, no, V and A, 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 so two, two brothers. One of the, I, I don't know which one Vladimir. of them. Vladimir, maybe, maybe. Do you know the reference? <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, for the uh, order two, that is with higher touching uh, of this polynomial to, to the exponential function, uh, the, uh, the solution is, is given in terms of so-called Zoltarev polynomials, which have uh, uh, parametric representation in, in terms of elliptic functions. And this was done by Lebedev in 1994. This is the solution. And for, for, for a long period of time, no, uh, no formula was, no, no, w was given for, for higher degrees uh, and until uh, I uh, suggested some, exp some expression uh, for, for the general case. And uh, it's v very non-trivial for computation, that is, if you have a formula, it doesn't mean that you can easily compute something with it, actually, uh, because it requires some, uh, some uh, analysis with moduli space of Riemann surfaces, et cetera. Et cetera. So, uh, it, it, so the, the formula could be made efficient in terms of Riemann theta functions or Schottky functions. Uh, the uh, Schottky functions were, were the, it, it was made in 2004, and the Riemann Theta functions five years after that with my student Arturas van Dierf.
So there is a theorem uh, which is due to Austrian mathematician Willy Ria from Vienna, who proved that uh, this optimization problem exact, has exactly one solution, which is no, no, now known as optimal stability polynomial. And that time it, was, it has the same name, of course. And, uh, and uh, this solution is completely characterized by the following property. Uh, that is, on the interval, oops, it is the largest interval, the stability interval, where the deviation of polynomial is equal or, or, or less or equal to 1, uh, it contains exactly the, this number of alternation points. That is where the value of polynomial is equal to pl plus or minus 1 and uh, th this consecutive change of sign. This is the Ch Chebyshev property. So uh, I will I emphasize here that uh, the, the, the right point of the interval is excluded here. And this point 0 sometimes uh, it can be included in the alternation, but it will give us some extra alterna alternation. Set. That is, there will be one more alternation point. It depends on the, on the parity uh, of, of P. And uh, the oscillatory behavior of the solution, which means that uh, the solution looks like a wave of constant amplitude uh, on the stability domain, uh, on stability segment here, uh, that, that we can use Chebyshev theory, uh, that is, uh, rewriting this problem in terms uh, as a certain functional equation. And the modern reading of this theory is this. Suppose uh, we have a polynomial, uh, and the polynomial has uh, some critical points, that is points where the derivative of this polynomial is equal to 0. And suppose we have certain rule, that is, uh, Almost all critical points of the polynomials are simple, and uh, the value uh, of the polynomial in every critical point uh, is equal to plus one or minus one. So there are maybe some, there may be some, uh, some exceptions from this rule, but uh, and, and the number of exceptions is uh, is counted by this formula. This is some formula, but well. Uh, and we fix the number of exceptions. That is, there is a rule, and uh, there are some exceptions from this rule. And uh, if we can uh, effectively, we, we can give a formula for the polynomials with, with this behavior in terms of uh, certain Riemann surfaces. And essentially, the, this formula belongs to, to Chebyshev. He, he, he wrote uh, the representation in his famous paper of 1853. Uh, so what, what is this Riemann surface? Uh, this is a very simple Riemann surface. It is two-sheeted Riemann surface. That is, uh, today we say it is hyperelliptic surface with branching set exactly at the points where the polynomial takes values plus and or minus 1 with odd multiplicity. If, for instance, for the Chebyshev polynomials, that's with the end point of the segment minus 1. Uh, one can prove it's, it's quite simple that uh, the extremality number of, a, of every polynomial, that is, number that you can count as a number of exceptional critical points, is exactly equal to the genus of this Riemann surface. A genus is a number of handle in a topological model of the surface. <coughs> and how to make a representation? For this Riemann surface, there is some distinguished abelian differential on it. It has simple poles at infinity, and the residues plus or minus 1 there, and purely imaginary period. This is one of the possibilities to make a normalization uh, on a, uh, of an abelian differential on the Riemann surface. And it was, yet, it was used yet by Riemann himself in his uh, dissertation. So let, let us denote this differential by d eta, and it is exactly one on, on this Riemann surface. 
Yeah, there is a, a formula for it, but OK. So uh, one can prove that a, a surface is generated by a degree n polynomial, as on the previous slide, exactly if all the periods uh, of this uh, abelian differential are commensurable. That is, they lie in this, exactly in the same lattice. And the, the lattice is, is uh, defined by the degree of the polynomial. And once it is so, that is, once uh, all, the, uh, <coughs> all the periods lie in the lattice, the polynomial may be reconstructed from the surface uh, up to the sign by a very simple formula, which you, you see it, it resembles the formula of Chebyshev, the cosine of n times r cosine of x. Uh, but this is a, a generalization of it. And by the way, uh, this uh, Ria, Willi Ria, he wrote a formula something like this, but he told that it, it's impossible to compute anything with this formula because there, it contains too many parameters and one doesn't know what to do with them. In fact, it is possible to make this formula efficient. Uh, and uh, here I give the example. If we take a sphere, this formula gives us exactly Chebyshev polynomials. And they are very rigid objects. They are not flexible. That is, you have just one parameter to define. The, uh, it is the, the degree of, of the polynomial. If we have a torus, you, get, you, you have a, a family of Zoltarev polynomials. But they depend already on a, uh, on a parameter which is the uh, elliptic modulus of a torus. If you have a double donut, that is, yeah, or, or sig figure eight, sig figure eight, <laughs> yeah, the, the, there is another, yeah, another term. Uh, it, it gives, for instance, uh, optimal stability polynomials for third degree of accuracy, or Chebyshev polynomials on three segments. And one of those uh, were represented already in, uh, in a talk of, by Peter Yudisky today. That they correspond to, Chebysh, uh, to, to a hazer comb uh, with two cuts. That's exactly them. So <clears throat> let's try to make this formula computationally effective. And uh, first of all, we have to find what kind of, of Riemann surfaces correspond to optimal stability polynomials. Oh, no, this is some motivation. How much time I have more? Uh, you have uh, three minutes. Uh, three minutes uh, to the beginning of questions. If you don't want questions, then you can finish. You want I see, I see. But, but maybe, maybe, maybe I skip the motivation. Because uh, actually, this is a motivation from Chebyshev. This is, uh, this is a uh, Chebyshev differential equation. Uh, and oh, that's, that's a good uh, digression. Uh, the significance of Chebyshev construction it reaches far beyond the, this problem uh, of optimal stability polynomials. Uh, for, for instance, it, it may be used for the construction uh, of a higher analogy of, uh, analogies of Zoltarov fractions. We also heard this uh, problem today already. Uh, and uh, this is a, has a relation uh, with, uh, uh, with industry. N namely, electrical engineering, engineering. and uh, <coughs> uh, this uh, example, it looks like a fence or a barcode, but actually it isn't. It, it is a, a, a graph of rational function which, uh, uh, which approximates, which is the best, uh, best, best, best approximation in C norm of a two-valued function. This is a transfer function of certain electrical filter, which has too, too many around 100 of uh, working bands. So you have pass bands and stop bands here. Uh, so it, one can show that uh, the surface, the Riemann surface associated to optimal stability polynomials, it always has just one real oval. This is one of the. Uh, a topological invariance of, of real algebraic curves. And the genus is not greater than pi minus 1 pi is the order of touching. Uh, in, in fact, uh, it is equal to the pi minus 1, I believe. But it, it, one can prove it for, for only smaller values of pi only. 
but, but actually, I think that here it is an equality always. And the proof is based on certain study of topology of other stars developed by those uh, authors. Mm. It, 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 it says that for our case that we are interested in, uh, pi equal to 3, uh, the surface uh, associated to normalized uh, optimal stability polynomial, that is, we just rescaled the real axis so that uh, the length uh, uh, of, the optim of the stability domain is 1. Here L is the length of stability domain. So it has only two real branch points, say at points 0 and minus 1. And also it has two couples of complex conjugate branch points. So uh, the model is space of such curves. Uh, it, it, uh, it is given by the position of those complex uh, branch points in the upper half plane. So this is a, a square of the upper half plane, but we have to throw away the diagonal because the branch points cannot glue. Uh, otherwise, we get a nodal curve. Uh, and uh, we do not distinguish between them. So we have to make a factor by permutations of those points. So uh, this is uh, some uh, variety. It's a smooth, smooth real variety of dimension 4. Uh, but it has no trivial topology. Its uh, fundamental group is uh, the group of, of integers. Okay. So this is some uh, picture which uh, shows us uh, the scheme, <coughs> the, 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 uh, the, the, the homologies uh, on, this, uh, on this curve, of a, on a typical curve. And here are some uh, equations. That is, we have four parameters that we have to find to, to, to obtain our curve. And we need four equations. And uh, the set of equations, it's written here. I will not explain it because I have very little time. Uh, in, one can show that you, 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 on, on this uh, modulized space, you, you get exactly one solution of this set of equations. And uh, uh, eventually, we, one can uh, uh, find the polynomial. This is a graph of one of optimal stability polynomial of degree 31. And we see that it looks like a, a Chebyshev polynomial with one, one exception. Because if we, you count the number of oscillations, there are only 29. Whereas uh, Chebyshev would have 31. And two of the oscillations are hidden somewhere in the complex plane. They are not, you cannot see him, them on this figure. And uh, there are actually two. Uh, numerical technologies that can be used for the solution of this problem. Uh, and one of them, I, I give, give only a hint, because it, this is a very large topic uh, on the uh, uh, numerical analysis on modulized spaces. It's, it, it's very interesting and large topic. But here we, we can use uh, one approach as a representation uh, of the abelian integral uh, that is a part of Chebyshev representation by Poincaré series for a suitable short key model uh, of this surface. And uh, another approach is, uh, is to use a Riemann theta function of genus 2. Uh, and uh, so we have to work with Jacobian var variables here. Uh, and finally, I, I would say to sh I would like to, sh to show you two enigmatical contexts, constants. That is, the length of stability domain is grows with the degree roughly as n squared. This is it's, it's a certain fact. Uh, well, to, to today, it is explained only. Yeah, this is uh, very simple to explain. This constant uh, was explained by Franz Pichersdorfer in his late years in terms of elliptic functions. And uh, this constant is not explained at all yet. So anyone can try. That is to, to give a representation uh, of for this constant in terms of some uh, modular constants uh, of uh, genus 2 curves. And OK, there is also, I have to say, a, a word about damped polynomials. But I think that I will better show you a picture. This is a damped polynomial. So it, it, it uh, possesses some enhanced uh, stability properties, which is necessary to solve, uh, to, to, to have robust algorithms. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Are there any questions to the speaker? Please. Possible to uh, adopt uh, su such uh, method uh, from ordinary to partial uh, equations. In a sense, yes. You have first, first you have discretization of partial dif evolutionary no, partial. No. Discretization is, is possible because uh, such uh, uh, subtitled me method um, with uh, some algebraic uh, uh, algebraic. If if you want to. Uh, to work with the computer, you, you have to, to adapt uh, your algorithm, that is, to make some difference equation, eventually. And there are quite very many ways to do so. There are lots of algorithms, you have, uh, lots of constants that you have to adjust. This is, this is why uh, lots of optimization problems arise in numerical analysis. And this is one, just one of them. Okay, thank you. And uh, unfortunately, we should stop here. Yeah. If you have any questions to the speaker, please, in, uh, in, uh, during the break. Yeah, let's but you should have Let's uh, thank again. <laughs>